What began as a leisurely stroll down the river walk has become a major project of UTC's Institute of Archaeology and Mark Making, a local nonprofit that aims to empower non-professional artists by teaching them 21st century problem-solving skills and the goal of a more fulfilling life. President and founder of Mark Making, Francis McDonald, stumbled upon the bluff furnace about a year and a half ago. I see this wonderful frame reaching up to the sky, and I vaguely remember that there was some kind of furnace there. As executive director of Mark Making, constantly looking for sites to hang public art. I see a great place to hang pictures, the rotating, revolving exhibition. Thought about all this stuff, and I gave Garnet Chapin a call to see what was going on with that, and subsequently found out that it was the Bluff Furnace site. Garnet Chapin is a local architect and chairman of the Parks Foundation. The giant steel round frame reaches about 42 feet into the sky and is located just west of the Hunter Museum. Nick Hunterkamp, director of the Institute of Archaeology at UTC, explains just what the bluff furnace is. That frame is a replica of the actual furnace, of skeleton of the furnace, and it's life size. We scaled it off from historic photographs. It was built in 1860. It failed in 1860, and that was the end of it. But that was the end of a five-year period in which Chattanooga's first heavy industry really got cranked up. Bluff Furnace began as a traditional coal-fired furnace and was converted into a cupola-type furnace. At the same time, it was modified from a square stone structure into a cylindrical boilerplate stack. Robert Cravens was the ironmaster, and uh, he designed and built that site. And what's interesting about it is it started out as kind of a head of its time charcoal fueled steam powered blast furnace. And some of them are cold blasts. This is, was a hot blast. They heated up the air before they blasted it into the barth, and that made it more efficient. And then in 1860, they tore that all down and built another furnace that was definitely ahead of its time and put Chattanooga on the map in terms of industrial history. It was a modern type of furnace. They still make them today in the shape of what is called a cupola, which was an iron-clad furnace instead of a limestone-clad furnace. And it used coke, which is a derivative of coal, as a fuel. And no other blast furnace in the United States was doing that that early. The conversion from charcoal to coke, which led to increased impurities, proved problematic, and in late 1860, the furnace was abandoned. UTC excavated this site in the 80s, and what we found archaeologically is that there was a failure in the lining of the hearth, and the iron escaped, and it set up. It went out of blast and cooled down, so there was this huge glob of iron called a salamander that was still in place. Everything else had been torn down and taken somewhere else, but they couldn't move that. It weighed several thousand pounds, so it was still there. And so the furnace couldn't be used until around 1864, the Union soldiers that were occupying Chattanooga used it to make lime. It was a lime kiln for maybe a year, and lime was used in masonry construction. Given the history of the furnace, the Parks Foundation decided to restore the area and piggyback onto that the restoration of the Walnut Street Bridge, all spearheaded by Garner Chapin, explains McDonald. So they restored that site. They had the cupola area. Garnet had built a tower that represented that. It was sheathed. It was like a big vinyl sheath that was painted to look like a chimney. It was like iron axe. Yeah, a blast furnace. And that was there for, what, about four years? And then it just eventually wore out and fell down. And the grass growing and some of the signage started missing. So the history part, the historical sightness of it, no longer was functioning. So, of course, somebody like me walking around who wasn't reading the signs, I thought it was a great place to hang artwork. And then the Parks Foundation got active again early last year. And they started looking at doing something there. And, of course, with mark making, we wanted to document the history of this site with archaeology students and work with Nick and paint another giant sheath that would have some historical information on it. So it's our partnership with the parks and with the city, if the city agrees to do that, and the county who have jurisdiction over the Riverwalk. So we're talking to the Public Art Committee right now to make sure that that's a go. UTC student archaeologist Tanya Dickinson is a member of the class that is to create the artwork that will go on the structure and will determine how it will be hung. The artwork itself remains undecided at this point. We're looking at several large size pictures to help display the character of Cravens and the different specific blast furnaces that were standing there. And then also the story, the story itself. So people can read why this site is important because right now 
there's nothing there. People don't even know what is there. So we just want to get the story out there so that people can see this and say, okay, well, this was important and it should still be important to Chattanooga. The logistics are horrendous, explains McDonald. Six panels that are seven feet by 42 feet, probably in the studio. So we're coming up with some kind of scrolled, painted activity. And then whatever techniques are necessary to uh, transfer the difficult content that the students will come up with. It's the first time Mark Making will be working on an historic project and the first time working with university students. And it's new for, I mean, it's new for us because it has an artistic component. We're going to blend those two together and that kind of blows my mind. It's really an interesting and innovative and unique way to present that story in an engaging way instead of just some signs that people may or may not read. Owner Camp says he hopes the project will be complete by the end of the semester. Hopefully the end of the semester, in December. It should be up in December, but we'll see. It's a work in progress and it may take another semester. I don't know, but I'm making grades contingent on a deadline. That deadline is the end of the semester. A blog will be kept on the continuing progress of the project at blufffurnace.eblog.com. Information will also be posted on the Mark Making Facebook page. To hear the show again, go online to wutc.org and click on Around and About blog. For Around and About, I'm Julie Steele. Around and About is a production of WUTC with contributions by the staff and volunteers of WUTC.